This is an election that could change America, and at the heart of it is religion. We put our faith in Almighty God. I'll be an ally of the light, not the darkness. Nearly two-thirds of Americans are Christian, and more than half say they'd be less likely to support a candidate who didn't believe in God. White evangelicals helped Donald Trump win in 2016. This is, in my opinion, spiritual warfare. But a different type of Christian could tip the result this time. I do not believe that President Trump stands for Christian values. If you're gay, and you want to marry another man, and you pray, and if you believe in God, and you say, I, this is just how I feel, that's how you feel. God would like to see no abortions, so that is something I do agree with. So what are the issues that matter to Christian voters? And do you need Jesus in order to win? I would describe myself politically as a Christian conservative patriot. That's what I'm looking for. Make sure you can see it through. Firearms instructor Rhonda is one of the Christians who helped Donald Trump into the White House. Exit polls show that more than eight out of ten white evangelicals voted for him. My faith and my relationship with Jesus Christ is, is paramount, it is the utmost importance. Um, it is number one priority. It, it rules my decisions. Our leadership dictates um, uh, the society that we live in, and I would prefer that it continue to stay the God-centered country that it was originally created to be. She believes having a gun is a God-given right. This is um, good against evil. We are God's army. The, the Christian is God's army on earth. Rhonda's what many people think all Christians in America are alike. But the majority are not white evangelicals. I'm a Christian, so I know that the church is diverse. There are black people like me, Latinos, and also an increasingly vocal Christian left. So I wanted to speak with people we don't usually hear from in a state that could vote either way. To do that, I'm traveling as best as I can in a pandemic to North Carolina. It's a key swing state in America's Bible Belt, and Donald Trump won here in 2016. This time, the two candidates are running almost neck and neck in North Carolina, and the arguments playing out in the state reflect those being had right across the country. COVID-19 and the job losses it's brought have hit black and Latino communities disproportionately hard. We started this about March, in March, March 15th. Pastor Brickhouse runs a drive through giving free meals in the state capital, Raleigh. The pandemic saw demand increase tenfold. So this is one of our sites in Morrisville. Uh, individuals come up, they let them know how many meals they need. And they but he's offering more than food. And then at the end of the table, you'll see the information for school supplies, as well as information for uh, the census data and voting. His church has set up a voter education war room. So if you just make a mark by his name, I'll be sure to mail him one. Okay. I believe that the black Christian vote is more energized this election cycle uh, because what we have seen is that lives really do depend on it. I do not believe that President Trump stands for Christian values. I believe that President Trump prays on the Christian faith in order to seek re-election. The black church in Greensboro has a history of civil rights activism, from sit-ins in the 1960s to Black Lives Matter today. I'm about the Christianity that is about a revolutionary Jesus, a Jesus that cared for the poor, the sick, and ultimately stood up against the powers and principalities, the systems of his day. Pastor Morris is part of a movement called the Poor People's Campaign, hoping to reclaim what it means to be a Christian from the political right. I've been harmed by uh, unjust police practices. I've tried to fight for my own uh, justice. I've filed complaints. They've gone up all the way to the Department of Justice and, and have been denied. Uh, so I, I know what it's like to feel the injustice of a unjust world. The heart of Christianity to me is the, um, really the care of the poor. And our faith calls us into the spaces um, of systemic poverty and, and racism. Thank you, thank you. It's important to me uh, that our, our state um, 
speak clear that it rejects the kind of policies and the experience that we've had under this president. More than a quarter of all Christians are black or Latino, and they tend to vote for the Democratic Party. But it's not always that simple. 19-year-old Rose is voting for the first time this year. Uh, some pros for Trump would be the abortion. I think that is something I agree with. You know, as a Christian, that is something that God would like to see is no abortions. So that is something I do uh, agree with on Trump's side. Latino Christians have been called the ultimate swing voters. Nearly half are Catholic and they're often more conservative when it comes to issues like abortion. But Donald Trump's immigration policies can make things difficult. Rose's mum is from Honduras. My mom, uh, she's, um, she's got this temporary status which allows her to stay in the country but um, it's just temporary for now. I'm not sure what the future may hold for me and her or for our family um, because of that. If I could choose what I would like to see in a candidate, I would really like to see him give a chance to immigrants. Faith and religion is a huge aspect of everything we do. Uh, everything that our life evolves around is really around faith and, and we show that by not only having a church right here behind me that's so beautiful, but being surrounded by churches, this whole area, I mean, you can't go a corner without seeing one. It's, it's, quite, it's quite awesome. In the small town of Granite Falls, Tristan will also be voting for the first time. I do believe for you to win the American election, you do need Jesus, and you do have to have a Christian, Christian value or a Christian belief. Tristan and his friends are socially liberal. The older generations, they, were, they grew up in that strict Christian community where it was traditional all the way, no, no gay marriage, no... None of that. I mean, that's just how they grew up, and I feel like that generation pushed a lot down. But the, this generation is the first one I've seen kind of step against that and say, like, no, like, this is meant to be interpreted as mm -hmm. things change. It's not up to me as far as, like, with the abortion stuff. I might not necessarily support the idea of it, but at the same time, I'm never going to tell somebody that God told them not to get, you know, that if they believe, I just want them to pray to God for it. And if they pray to God, and they say, I think I, I'm going to have the abortion. I talk to God. Then that's what God told them. Who am I to say that God didn't tell you that? If you're, if you're gay and you want to marry another man and you pray and if you believe in God and you say, I, this is just how I feel, that's how you feel. And there's nothing I can do about that. And I believe that's what Christianity is, is learning to accept others. And we all get a different message from God. And who am I to tell you that yours, yours is wrong? But they do like how Donald Trump speaks about faith. And I feel like he's going for a lot of the young vote, especially whenever you're going against somebody like Joe Biden that's not very good at... Um, I guess you would say captivating people, catching people's attention. I mean, I've seen him like post scriptures and stuff on Twitter, and he even prays before his uh, rallies and stuff like that. So, I mean, it's getting a point across to me that he really like wants the Christian votes. There's another Christian who has a huge influence in his life. They're both saying stupid stuff. Right. So don't. I mean, as I much won't. as you you need to watch both. I will. You need to watch I what promise. Joe saying. I will. You see that. I will, I promise. See, he's too smart. I love him. I am for Joe Biden. Um, as far as my faith values go with supporting him would be simply that we both do believe in God. I know he is Catholic and that is different than me. But the idea that we both believe in God and we have a lot of the same values from me listening to him talk, um, I feel like we have a lot more in common than um, I definitely have with Donald Trump. Tristan supported Donald Trump in 2016, even though he was too young to vote. At two o'clock in the morning and my ear was saying, drain, drain the swamp, drain the swamp, because Trump had won. And then, and then my husband was so excited he couldn't believe it. And I was devastated because I really loved Hillary Clinton. Um, but so anyway, but we just all came together, you know, we just like, I never want us to be apart because of politics. She's, so you're still, she, you're still undecided, not, right, not, Tristan? She's not very liberal. I love that you're undecided, though. You're but, thinking. So uh, just don't let anybody make you think Bi anything. Just do Joe what Biden you want to do. Is pretty incoherent. But not everyone's able to have conversations like this. The left is either going to... Um, make us pay or in retribution for the last four years, um, or 
uh, they will become uh, even more violent than they are now if they don't win. When I first started working on this film, I could not have imagined that I'd be making it during lockdown. And I also could not have anticipated America's racial reckoning and the impact that would have on me. Some of the things that people shared really helped me at a time that my own faith was challenged. And others helped me see the fears behind the divisions that we see. What so many Americans have in common is that faith will shape their vote. And that is why Jesus could be the key to winning this election. I'm putting a lot of faith into God that at the end of this, no matter who wins, that the right person comes out. And how confident are you in those prayers? I'm very confident in that.